Hello, welcome to my video. Before I continue, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to those who celebrate, and Happy Holidays to all. This is a Simishira Christmas special that takes place in the canon Heikaiu time skip, so there are very slight spoilers. The warnings for this video do contain spoilers for the story, so I recommend that you skip the rest of this intro unless you believe this video may have contents that can trigger you. This video depicts a car accident and a near-death experience, and contains mentions of depression. Also, a friendly warning, this video does contain cursing. As always, I hope you enjoy. Now on to the video. In which two people share what feels like their first Christmas together. Knock knock. Semi wrapped the door of his shared room with Shiribu, listening to the shuffling of papers and his boyfriend's muffled reply beyond the door. Come in. Semi opened the door slowly and peeked his head inside with a smile, though it began to falter when he saw the state of their room. The small desk that Shiribu sat at was buried beneath a pile of loose leaf papers and textbooks, their bed home to plenty of binders, folders, markers, pens and pencils. The floor was littered with about a dozen balled up pieces of paper like hail fallen from the sky. And yet, Shiribu sat in the midst of that blizzard of schoolwork, staying completely focused as he wrote on the piece of paper in front of him. Semi stepped fully into the room doorway now, his smile etched with concern. Hey there stranger. Shiribu only hummed in response, not even looking up at Semi. Semi frowned. At least look at me. I can listen and work. What did you need? With a sigh and a ruffle of his hair, Semi continued to speak. I was wondering, do you maybe want to go out to lunch this afternoon? There's this new place that opened up nearby. No. Shiribu's swift reply nearly knocked Semi off his feet. What? I said no. Setting his pencil down on the desk, Shiribu swiveled his chair to look at his boyfriend in annoyance. Don't you see that I'm working? It's always, hey, wanna go here? What about there? No, the answer is no, I don't want to. You know I have exams coming up, and yet you keep asking me to go places with you. It's seriously pissing me off. Semi walked into the room and grabbed Shiribu by his shoulders. He knelt down so that he could look right into Shiribu's eyes, searching them to find the real reason for the contempt in his voice. What the hell has been up with you lately? What's wrong? Talk to me. Please. Nothing is wrong, other than you not having any decency to understand when I need to be left alone. What? Semi stood up abruptly, the volume of his voice rising with him as he snapped at Shiribu. What the fuck do you mean? I don't understand when to leave you alone. All I do is leave you alone. Like, are we boyfriends or distanced roommates? So sorry that I'm just trying to get my boyfriend to take a break from his studies to spend time with me. Seriously, what is wrong with you? You know what, I'm fucking done here. Semi went to their closet to grab his winter coat and left the room, calling out to Shiribu over his shoulder. You can talk to me when you're ready to tell me what's going on. With that, he grabbed his car keys, stepped out the front door, and slammed it behind him. Once out on their porch, Semi felt a shiver run down his spine. Though, he wasn't sure if it was because of the cold or his spat with Shiribu. Semi exhaled slowly, watching his breath go up into the air in a fog that was as white as the snow that decorated the ground and the exterior of every home on the block. He was about to turn to his car before he felt something pull his arm back. Semi turned to see Shiribu looking up at him, still only in a thin shirt and joggers. There'll be other times for lunch dates eat a coon. Oh don't give me that shit Kenjirao. You're not going to fail an exam because we went on a little lunch date or whatever. Can you even remember the last time we went on a date? Dot dot dot. No. Exactly. Semi pulled his arm back from Shiribu and began to walk away, Shiribu right behind him. Things have been getting rougher between us for months, and you know that, even our friends can see that. More fights and silent treatments and someone sleeping on the couch over the littlest things. Semi stopped walking, making Shiribu bump into him. Somehow, they had wound up in the middle of the street, surrounded by the bitterness of the cold and the conflict between them. Why is that? What changed? Do you not love me anymore? I do. Then why don't you act like it? I'm, I just. Semi saw that Shiribu was trembling. Something was seriously wrong with him, something that Shiribu refused to open up to him about. When Semi spoke, it was barely above a whisper. Kenji. Suddenly, Semi heard the whir of an engine and whipped his head to his right. Then he saw the headlights. He gave Shiribu a push. He heard the screeching of wheels before he felt the impact. He felt immeasurable pain. He felt the cold pavement beneath him. There was blood in his vision. There was a distant voice calling out to him. Then there was darkness. Eater. Shiribu woke up with a start, panting and shaking terribly as the memory of what had happened to Semi terrorized him. He stretched out his arm and fumbled around in the darkness, feeling for the lamp on the nightstand and flicking the switch. A dim yellow light filled the room, and Shiribu turned to his left to see an empty space where Semi would have been. Ita. Shiribu began to sob, clutching his sweat-drenched shirt as he did so. Ita. Ita, where are you? Distant footsteps grew louder as Shiribu continued to cry, then someone was skidding to a stop in the doorway. Semi stood there, his face half-lit half-shadowed in the lamplight. Kenji? Hey hey. Seeing his boyfriend, Semi quickly set the glass of water he was holding down on Shiribu's nightstand. He hopped into bed and wrapped his good arm around Shiribu, making sure he was careful with the one wrapped up in a cast. I just went to use the bathroom and get some water, I'm still here. 
Shirabu sobbed into Semi's shirt and held onto him desperately, as though he were afraid Semi would vaporize and be whisked into the air. All the while, Semi rubbed small circles on Shirabu's back and whispered comforting words into his ear. Eventually, Shirabu's sobs reduced into sniffles, and he was able to breathe normally again. Let me guess, you had a dream about the accident? Shirabu mumbled into Semi's chest. More like a nightmare. Wanna talk about it? Shirabu glanced up at Semi through his teary eyes, then gave him a nod. A part of me is afraid that I'll wake up one day and see that you're not there. And then I'll realize you being here right now is all a dream. And our last memories of each other would be me being an asshole and us fighting. Look. Taking Shirabu's hand, Semi placed it on his own chest. See? You can feel my heartbeat. I'm right here, Kenji, I'm here. I'm okay, we'll be okay. You're all sweaty and snotty, wanna go take a shower? Yeah, but... But... Can you hold me for a little while first? Semi wiped affectionately at the tears in the corners of Shirabu's eyes. Sure thing, but... Semi let go of Shirabu and reached for the lamp, flicking off the light before rewrapping his arm around his boyfriend and making them lie down. It's like 3 a.m., and it's Christmas Eve. I wanna get back to sleep so we have enough energy to do some fun stuff today, okay? Okay. Um, eat a coon? Um? I love you. Semi smiled and leaned in to plant a soft kiss on Shirabu's lips. I love you too. Slivers of sunlight peeled back the curtains of night and spilled a soft brightness into the room. Semi awoke first with a quiet yawn escaping his lips. He opened his eyes and blinked away his tiredness before peering at Shirabu in front of him. The two were still a tangle of limbs, Semi able to feel the steady rise and fall of Shirabu's chest and his rhythmic heartbeat since their bodies were pressed together. Shirabu was still fast asleep, so Semi nuzzled his head against Shirabu's face to try to awaken him. Kenji Kenji, wake up. Shirabu slowly began to awaken, removing his arms from around Semi and sitting up in the bed. Semi followed suit, noticing the sheer exhaustion exhibited on his boyfriend's face and his movements. Semi smiled and reached out to rub Shirabu's arm. That nightmare still has you feeling worn out, huh? Shirabu nodded sleepily while he rubbed his eyes. He turned to look at Semi, his eyes catching the sunlight peeking through the blinds and making his arm and irises glisten. There was a slight tinge of pink to his cheeks, and he averted his eyes as soon as they met Semi's. Dot dot dot. You're not embarrassed about it, are you? Dot dot dot. Kenji. I am I am. He turned his head back around, his cheeks pinker than before and a pout playing on his lips. I don't like you seeing me so... Vulnerable? Yeah. Semi ran his hand through Shirabu's hair and leaned in to press a kiss to his cheek. We have to be vulnerable with each other Kenji. You don't have to feel the need to hide with me, I'm here for you 100%. Semi thought back to that day. The day where he had almost lost his life. The day where he realized his relationship wouldn't work with the one he loved if Shirabu never fully let him into his heart. Don't shut me out again. Semi saw Shirabu flinch at the word again, and he quickly reached out his arms and wrapped them around Semi's neck. I won't. I'm sorry. Semi sighed and rubbed Shirabu's back. You don't have to be. He let go of Shirabu and pushed Shirabu back gently to look at him. It's Christmas Eve, and we haven't done a lot of Christmas Y stuff yet. Let's get ready so we can get started. Shirabu snorted. You've been so excited about this for days. Semi smiled. Only cause it's with you. Shirabu couldn't help but smile back as he softly punched Semi's arm. You're such a dork. Dot dot dot. I love you. Hey, I love you too. We're wearing pajamas? The two were in their bathroom getting ready for the day, Shirabu holding out a red, plaid set of Christmas-themed pajamas in front of him. Semi turned his head from his place at the sink to answer his boyfriend. Yeah. Do you not like it? It's not that, I just don't know why I'm changing out of pajamas to wear pajamas. Okay yeah, when you say it like that it sounds dumb. But we've got to get into the Christmas spirit Kenji. Put it on already. As Semi grabbed a towel to dry his freshly washed face, Shirabu put on the oversized pajamas. When Semi finished drying his face, he looked at Shirabu with a sparkle in his eyes. You look really cute. All thanks to my incredible purchase. I'm going to ignore that last part. Semi chuckled as he picked up his matching pajamas from the sink counter, Shirabu shaking his head with a slight smile. Once they were both dressed, they left their bathroom and spoke as they walked through their house. Do you want to go out somewhere to eat for breakfast? Sure. Where? As he and Semi stepped into their living room, Shirabu turned to look at the rocking chair that Goshiki had given as a housewarming gift. Suddenly, a distant memory flitted across Shirabu's mind. His vision was overrun with the faint image of him and Semi sharing a seat in the chair, snuggled up under a large quilted blanket while nursing steaming mugs of hot chocolate with marshmallows. He saw them giggling at each other and Semi reaching out to white whipped cream from Shirabu's nose despite the whipped cream on his own. Though it had been a while ago, Shirabu's mind painted the image vividly. Kenji? Kenji? Shirabu pulled himself out of the memory and ref accused on Semi, who was shaking his arm. Jeez, how do you blank out in the middle of a conversation like that? And why are you staring at our rocking chair all weird like that? Oh, uh, uh, I was just thinking. Let's stay home instead. I'll make us hot chocolate and some omelettes to eat. Semi raised an eyebrow. Oh, uh, why? Ah, uh, no reason. I just want to. Now go sit down. I can help you cook. Absolutely not. But you've been doing all the cooking lately. And I did almost none of the cooking before. 
Besides, you have one good arm. It'd be harder for you, and it'd take longer. Thank you for the offer, but I'm fine. If you say so. Shirabu ushered Semi into the living room and onto the rocking chair before leaving to go to the kitchen. After about 20 minutes, he returned with a quilt draped over one shoulder and a tray with two matching mugs of hot chocolate, two omelettes, and bread. Semi, who had been rocking in the chair and doing nothing but waiting, smiled cheerfully when he saw Shirabu. Oh, look at all this. Shirabu snorted as he set the tray down on their small coffee table. Mind if I join you on the rocking chair? Oh, uh, here. Yeah. Semi scooted over as far as he could and patted the small space next to him. There's always space for you. Lucky me. Semi laughed as Shirabu squeezed in next to him. Shirabu took the quilt off of his shoulder and wrapped it around the two of them, his body relaxing in the newfound warmth. He then reached for the two mugs on the tray, grabbing them and handing one to Semi. Or, oh, did you add extra whipped cream just for me? Sure did. Semi smiled appreciatively and took a long sip from the mug before sighing satisfactorily. He rested his head against Shirabu's and snuggled against him ever closer as he took another sip from his mug. You know, Kenji. Shirabu swallowed the hot chocolate in his mouth and hummed. I forgot how good your hot chocolate is. You haven't made it since. This time last year? Yeah actually. I remember us sitting here like this drinking hot chocolate, quilt and all. And we talked about how life was going and what we were up to and all the plans we had for ours. Do you remember that? Of course I do. That's actually why I wanted to stay home. So I could do this with you. So we could have this again. Semi sipped his hot chocolate and smacked his lips together as he turned his head a bit to look at Shirabu. He only stared, not speaking, as though he were carefully considering his next words. I've missed this. They were only three simple words, but it was enough to pierce Shirabu's chest and go straight to his heart. I've missed this too. I'm sorry. You don't have to say sorry. Just promise we'll do it more often again. We will. Shirabu tilted his head upwards to plant a soft kiss to Semi's lips. I love you. I love you too. They both leaned back and began to rock the chair gently. So, how's school been? Pretty good actually. Things are a lot calmer because of the holidays, so I'm feeling way more peaceful now. I could barely handle high school science, and you're taking these crazy hard science courses. I don't know how you do it, but I just worked hard to succeed. I just think that the periodic table of elements is homophobic. But, eat a coon, neither of us are straight. Shh. PFFT. Well, I'm good at other things. Like, well, okay. I'm kidding, eat a coon. No no, just forget that I'm the lead singer and a guitarist in my band or whatever. Semi looked wistfully at his arm in a cast. Well, was a guitarist. He abruptly perked up and quickly set down his mug, reaching into his pocket to pull out his phone. Oh, I've got to show you the recording from our latest gig. Ah, I wish I could have come. No problem bud, I know you were visiting family. I really wish you could have been there too though, this is the first time we've played a song that I wrote. Whoa, really? You wrote it? I thought you weren't into songwriting. Semi grinned. Well, I had some inspiration. Semi unlocked his phone and went to YouTube to find the video, turning his phone sideways and bringing it closer to Shirabu so that they could both see the screen. The screen showed Semi standing front and center on a stage with a microphone in front of him. His band members were on stage behind him making final adjustments to their equipment. Look, I'm even wearing the shirt you bought for me. Good thing, your fashion sense is weird. I think you mean unique. Sure. Or, don't be mean. Shirabu giggled against Semi's chest as the band started to play. Truthfully, Shirabu had already watched the video. In fact, he had watched it about eight times, not even counting the times he showed it to a family member or one of his friends. The sweetness of the melody and Semi's voice were familiar and comforting, and Shirabu felt swept up with the passion Semi expressed through his lyrics. All too soon, the song ended, and a loud sound of applause ripped through the speakers of Semi's phone. Semi turned off his phone and set it on his lap, turning to Shirabu with a smile. So, what do you think? I really liked it. And it wasn't like any of the other original songs your band has played, probably because it was a love song. It was also sad, and really emotional. When did you write it? Sometime after the accident. Shirabu nodded, his suspicions confirmed. I wrote a bunch of songs after the accident, but this one is probably my favorite. Will your band ever play the other ones? Um, probably not, but... Semi smirked and gave Shirabu a wink. I can give you a private performance sometime if you'd like. PFFT, sure, I'd like that. Shirabu set down his empty mug of hot chocolate on the tray and picked up the plates with omelettes. Come on, let's eat these before the eggs get too cold. Shirabu and Semi continued to eat, cuddle, and talk as they rocked the chair back and forth. What do you mean Tendasan is bald? Well, he's not completely bald, but he might as well be. He tried giving himself a haircut and it didn't work out, so he just shaved his head. Shirabu scrunched up his nose. The mental image is so weird. I know right. You haven't seen it? No, he doesn't want to send me a photo because he wants to see my in-person reaction or something. I swear, when I see him, I'm going to rub his head three times and ask if I can make a wish like. Semi stopped speaking, his jaw dropping slightly as he looked out the window across from where he and Shirabu sat. Oh my gosh. Kenji, it's snowing. Shirabu turned from Semi to the window, seeing fluttering bits of white falling from above into an already white landscape. 
When Shirabu turned back around to Semi, he saw that his boyfriend was no longer beside him. Wow Itakun, he whipped his head around, trying to find Semi. His eyes laid on his boyfriend already at the front door wearing a huge winter coat and snow boots, his pajamas hidden underneath. What the hell? How did you get into that so fast? No time for questions. Kenji. Come on come on, I wanna go outside. Oi, oh, chill out. Come on, what if it stops snowing by the time you're ready? Shirabu set down his plate and folded up the quilt as he shook his head. You're like an impatient little kid. Shirabu walked up to Semi at the front door to pinch his butt, skipping away gleefully before Semi could grab him. Why you? I'll go get dressed now. Oof. Shirabu turned around to find the culprit who had hit him in the back with a snowball. He turned to see that it was no other than his boyfriend. Semi's smile stretching from ear to ear. You should see the look on your face. You'll pay for that. Shirabu and Semi ran around on top of the thick coat of snow covering the ground, laughing and yelling as they hit each other with snowballs. A partial sun poked through the overcast of thin, white clouds and enveloped the two lovers below in a welcoming acricity. The winter air was brisk and cool, a chilly breeze picking up as snow continued to fall from above. Tell me how I'm still faster at making snowballs than you with one hand. Oh hush. The only thing that Shirabu could find more enigmatic and beautiful in that moment was Semi. Semi stood at the center of that wintry scene, beaming with his eyes squeezed shut. The scar on his right cheek was dark against his pale skin, the fallen snow punctuating its sharpness. If anything, the newly added rugged feature made him look even more handsome. His ice kissed nose shone ruby in the cold, and his shining silvery locks swayed as his whole body shook with laughter. Hey, you threw that one kinda hard. Trying to break my other arm? Images danced before Shirabu's eyes once again as fond memories flooded his mind. Just last winter, he and Semi had snowball fights out on their lawn, happy and so drunk in love without a care in the world. Yet things had begun to sour after that winter, and their relationship entered a season of fights and a lack of endearment for months. Just about a month ago, they had stood on this same lawn during the same winter on the brink of a breakup. Just about a month ago, Semi had gotten hit by a car on the road that stood a couple meters away. Just about a month ago, Shirabu almost lost it all. Shirabu thought that Semi was much like the winter. At a glance, he could appear cold and a bit dull many would describe Shirabu the same way, but if one cared to learn enough about him, one would find that Semi knew just how to bring people together and become festive and warm. He sure knew how to make Shirabu feel festive and warm. Shirabu wasn't sure what would have become of him if he had lost Semi that day, and the notion that he was the cause of the accident ate him alive every day. Ah, uh, Kenji? Shirabu looked up from the snowball in his hands to Semi rushing over to him. You looked down all of a sudden. What is it? Did the snowball hit you too? Shirabu grabbed Semi by his hips and surged forward to kiss him. Semi's lips were hot against the cold, ever more delightful as Semi placed a hand on the back of Shirabu's head to deepen the kiss. As the kiss grew more heated, they stumbled through the snow and tried to reach the front door without releasing each other. His back hitting the front door, Semi reached behind him to turn the knob, he and Shirabu staggering back and into the house once it opened. Still entwined, they took off their boots at the Jenkin and shrugged off their coats, tripping over each other all the way to their bedroom. Finally breaking apart, Semi fell back onto the bed with Shirabu hovering above him, though Shirabu couldn't see him through his blurry vision. Oh my gosh you're crying. Shirabu hid his head in the crook of his elbow. The first time things had gotten heated with his boyfriend in months, and he started crying in the middle of it. How romantic. Shirabu felt Semi pulling his arm away and was met with his worried gaze. What's wrong? Shirabu sniffed and got off of Semi, sitting down on the bed beside him as Semi sat up as well. There were no longer tears in Shirabu's eyes. He just sat there. Empty. Drained. Helpless. But, I'm going to need you to talk to me. Dot dot dot. Please. Shirabu sighed deeply and looked down at his lap. I almost lost you, Itakun. Seeing your body after you got hit by that car. Shirabu clenched his fists in his lap. That was terrifying. Shirabu turned his head to look at Semi. I almost lost you to the fights and I almost lost you to that accident. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What? Why are you sorry? You don't have to be. I have every fucking reason to be sorry. Shirabu yelled it into Semi's face, and Semi was clearly taken aback by his outburst. I'm to blame for everything that happened. I had a feeling I was struggling with depression, but instead of getting treated, I just ignored it, and then you, someone that I care about so much, ended up suffering from my moodiness because of my own stubbornness and irresponsibility. And then you did some more suffering on my behalf when you pushed me out the way before that car could hit me. You could have just saved yourself, but no, you pushed me out the way. You almost died for me, and all I did was make your life harder. I didn't realize how much I cared about you until I almost lost you. I am. Shirabu dropped his head into his hands. A terrible person. How are you even still with me? Why are you even still with me? Kenji. Who was the one that visited me the most at the hospital? Dot dot dot. Answer me. Me. Who's the one that put their life on hold to take care of me after the accident? Me. Who's the one that gives me kisses and hugs and I love you s? Me. And who's the one that apologizes like a hundred times a day and has proven to me that they're sorry for the past? Me. Sound sure of yourself. Yes, it's you. Stop apologizing Kenji. You were struggling, and I knew that. I was never mad at you to begin with. 
But how? How can you not hate me after everything? Well, Semi smiled. Because you're the love of my life. And it's been that way for what? Five years now? Semi flushed a little. And, hopefully forever? Shirabu's eyes gleamed. Eat a kun. Wait here, I want to get something. Semi stood up from the bed and walked out of the room, returning after a few minutes with a small box in Christmas wrapping and a ribbon on top. What is that? My Christmas gift to you. But, Christmas is tomorrow. I know, but I think you need this gift now. Open it up. Shirabu gingerly took the gift from Semi's hands and began to unwrap slowly. He unwrapped it completely to reveal a small, black, velvety box. He opened the box and found two golden bands inside, one with an engraving of Shirabu's name and the other with Semi's. Eat a coon. Before you freak out, no I'm not proposing, we don't have nearly enough money to throw my expensive ass dream wedding. These are promise rings. Semi reached over to take the rings from the box, slipping the one with his name onto his own finger before taking Shirabu's hand and sliding on his ring. A promise for forever. Poetic right? Shirabu's eyes shimmered with fresh tears. You seriously, want forever with me? I can't think of anyone or anything else I'd like to spend it with. Shirabu wrapped his arms around Semi's neck, pulling him into a tight embrace. I take the hug as an I like it. No. I love it. Or. Shirabu pulled back and used a hand to caress the side of Semi's face, Semi leaning into the touch. I love you. I know. I love you too. Why do you say it so often? Nothing's wrong with it, quite the contrary actually, but it makes me feel like you think I'll forget. At one point, I stopped saying I love you. So I'm giving you all the I love you as I should have been giving you. Shirabu felt Semi's cheek grow warm and saw that his face was turning pink. Semi smiled bashfully. Can I have a kiss? Shirabu's eyes fluttered shut as he leaned forward, Semi meeting halfway and bringing their lips together. When they broke apart, Semi was smiling again. Thank you. I count myself lucky every day that I survived that accident. And I count myself even luckier that it brought our relationship back to where it needed to be. Sometimes it feels like we're a new couple, and we're sharing a bunch of new firsts together. It's like a second chance at everything. This time around, always be open with me, Kenji. You're safe with me, as I feel safe with you. Shirabu nodded, glancing at his new, glimmering ring that affirmed his promises. This time, I'll make sure that things are better. For the both of us. Semi grinned. I like the sound of that. 